Polly, a prominent researcher in aged care, knows the importance of demonstrating the quality and impact of her research. She's written numerous reports, impact statements and articles about it. But instead of writing a paper, this time she's thinking about making a video. Polly's made videos in the past, but they didn't bring the impact she'd hoped for. She was introduced to the four-phase media development model recently and realises that she's missed some key steps when planning her videos. Feeling a lot more prepared, Polly's keen to make a start. Polly has time and resources to make a video about her research. She's using the media development model to improve her chances of making a video that delivers impact. She starts by listing the reasons for needing a video, but soon realises that her list is too long. The model recommends keeping videos short, sharp and focused on addressing a single need. Hmm, a new social robot just hit the market and Polly's keen to test it out in her lab. But robots are expensive and she hasn't got the funds for it. A video, however, could help her raise money to buy new robots. Polly realises that buying new robots is her most important need. Polly recognises that her video needs to speak to the people who are likely to give her money for her cause. In the past, she's received funds for her research from all walks of life, often from people who've some understanding and a deep interest in dementia care. But identifying her key need has really helped Polly pinpoint the target audience for her video. Polly identifies general and informed as her target audience. Polly's been able to work through the first two steps of the model, but when it comes to the visuals for the video, she feels a bit stuck for ideas. She teams up with a media producer to work through the next three steps in the scoping phase. When she meets the producer, Polly has two ideas for visuals. But through a flow of conversations, the list soon grows. Though keen on using real life video footage, Polly also discovers opportunities for using motion graphics in the video. She's especially excited about making use of the design ideas and elements from her existing marketing resources. She didn't see the connection between these resources and the video until it was pointed out to her. Polly's thrilled with her progress so far. Her video's no longer simply a talking head. Polly's findings from the sessions with her volunteer patients tell a great story. But her report's long and it's written in an academic style. Not an easy content to translate into a short and engaging video. But what if, instead of focusing on the report, her video focuses on a dementia patient interacting with the robots? Showing the positive change in the patient's behaviour and mood will really grab her audience's attention. In the producer's experience, it's powerful images like this that drive people to support a cause. Polly agrees, but the subject matter's sensitive and she feels it'll be difficult to find a patient to film. The producer reminds her that there's lots of discreet ways to record patients without compromising the message. Polly sees the point and decides to make a few calls to find a volunteer patient to film. After making a few phone calls, Polly finds a patient and a carer who agree to be in her video. They're new to the technologies Polly's been testing in her lab and keen to try them. I think we've just found your story, Polly, said the producer when Polly broke the good news. We can build a strong and a meaningful script around this scenario, she explained. This situation presents the ideal opportunity to record an authentic and visually powerful piece that people can relate to. In addition, the producer's convinced that including unscripted verbal reactions from the patient and the carer will help make their content easily digestible. Happy with their efforts, the producer and Polly agree to move the project into the development phase. <laughs>